two beliefs that I have that are really core, core beliefs of mine. One is success leaves clues. If you want to be successful, go do what somebody successful has done. But the other piece is, and, and this is a core piece, is a team. Wherever you are and you're going to build your business, you can't do it by yourself. You know, I, too many people say all the time, hey, he's a self-made millionaire or she's a self-made millionaire. In essence, I don't believe anybody succeeds alone. Right, you know, right. It's about, it's about the efforts of, of more people on that team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host, Aaron Fragnito of the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. And we're back here with another episode, and we have Mike Marowski. How are we doing today, Mike? I'm good, Aaron. How are you? Excellent, my friend. Excellent. I wanted to have you on the show here because you've done a lot. You've owned up to oh, over 400 units. I think you'll tell us all about the numbers, but you got some big numbers on the board. You've done some big things. Now you're in the, the coaching end of the business and education. So really exciting shifts you made in your career here in real estate, and we're going to break into it today. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in this business first. Great question. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't think anybody's ever just born into the real estate business, right? I think it's mm -hmm. something that you quite acquire a taste for. And I think I acquired a taste when I was very young, early age, probably eight years old. I remember asking my dad, we were sitting on the side of a swimming pool at a resort, why so many rooms in this building? And he said, uh, he said, well, people come and stay here and they pay somebody money. And I knew at that point I wanted to be the guy that was collecting the money, right? <laughs> sure. So it was kind of, a, it was interesting. But over the years, I just, I, I really enjoyed real estate. I was in the construction business and I did a lot of work for some large apartment uh, um, syndicators in the Chicago market. Mm -hmm. And I watched them and I watched their model over the years. So eventually I got into uh, single family residential, selling uh, single family homes. I built a team. We sold well over 125 homes a year. Wow. In like 2005, I saw the market starting to shift and I knew that we were not going to be selling as many homes for the next few years as, as we thought. So I had always wanted to go into the apartment business because of my attraction uh, watching these other apartment syndicators build their business, you know, and so I made a decision to go into the apartment business. So we made that transition from that single family residential into a, our first deal that we did was 11 units mm. and we just grew from there. And it was interesting because the first deal, you, you never really know what you're getting into till you get into it. And you experience some of the, the learning curve along the way. And that learning curve caused me to really discipline myself around strategies for buying and strategies for operation. And, and then we grew from there. That's interesting. Yeah, I love it. So you were building 150 homes a year. You kind of glazed over that. You know, I've done large uh, renovations. We, we haven't really done much ground up construction, but there's a lot of moving pieces to construction. So doing 150 homes a year, that's a serious number. You, you had a whole construction crew going. How did you structure that exactly? Yeah, yeah Aaron, not construction, sales, uh, oh, residential sales. Okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. So, right. but just as many moving parts, let me tell you. Yeah, because right. Exactly. I was going to say it's, it's, uh, it's tough to build them, but it's also tough to sell them. And, but that's a great space to be in. So you were in the brokerage side and, and you, did you have like a, a team of agents going? I did. I had a buyers, uh, two buyers agents and a, and another listing agent on my team. And then three or uh, three administrative uh, people helping, you know, just with files and closing deals and, making sure loan commitments went through and all the marketing for the sellers was uh, taken care of. I could tell you exactly my numbers. You know, any, I think any smart business owner knows their numbers mm -hmm. and I could have told, I could tell you that I, I come from old school, right? Prospecting. I pick the phone up and prospect and look for sellers. Oh so yeah. I make 20,000 calls a year. Oh my gosh. They don't make them like you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So it's interesting. But with social media today, I think you can do the same thing. You can create as much damage 
You know, sure. I look at some of the people that are selling three, four hundred homes a year these days and, and thought, think that, you know, if I was in the business today and I was using social media, I certainly see how you could do that. Yeah, well, it's all about systems. You know, like you said, you had three administrative assistants, you had two buyer's agents, a listing agent, you know, and uh, as I say, if you list, you last in the business. But um, yeah, I mean, the, and it's such a competitive space as well. But boy, 150 homes a year. And what market was that? Was, was that which states were that? In the Chicago market in the Northwest suburbs. Okay, great, great. Yeah. So you were probably doing quite well with that. And then, you know, you consciously made a change to then break into the investor side of the business. Uh, that's a hard thing to do because you were probably living pretty comfortably at that point and had a nice little business set up. And uh, so what encouraged you to make that change instead of just putting your feet up and kind of building your business a little more and collecting those commissions? You could have gone well with that, but you had the motivation to make a change. And, and where did you find that, you think? Yeah, great question. You know, like I said, I it, when I was in the construction business, I did a lot of work for uh, inland real estate. Inland is the largest REIT in the world today, right? Mm. Uh, real estate investment trust. Sure. Yep, yep. And um, and watching them, you know, here's four school teachers that started their company with one uh, four flat in the Chicago market. Mm. And they built to what they've built today, right? So I, I watched that model and I watched how they, you know, very simple, right? You create, you, you raise private equity, you marry that with a great real estate deal. You operate the deal. You take advantage of a portion of the cash flow and a portion of the long-term uh, gains. Mm -hmm. And over over time, you become very successful. You start with one and just go on to the next one. And that's that's exactly how I built my company was based on that model. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting, you know, and that I started as a realtor in this business as well. And I developed a team at Remax. Now, mm -hmm. I don't think I focused on it enough and, and did the right structure because what I ended up doing was recruiting a lot of agents and covering their desk fee and then putting them on a commission split where, you know, it was, it was kind of very advantageous to me, but they had to sell houses for me to get paid. And I was on the hook for the bill every month. And what I realized is that when there's no incentive to work like that, uh, the agents ended up just reading books about selling houses instead of selling houses. So I, I had a team of agents that were, uh, I was paying their desk fees, but they weren't selling any houses. So that was a challenging uh, situation that I realized I had structured that incorrectly and um, then branched more into the investment side of the business. Uh, but that's good to be able to structure a team that makes sense. And uh, so at that time, um, do, you, do you still have your license and sell real estate or you're fully in the education and investment side of the business now. Yeah, I don't have my license anymore. I uh, am fully in the education, coaching, training space. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll tell you, over the years, I I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on books and tapes and seminars and personal coaching. And and even after twenty five years, I'm still coached today personally by a couple of different coaches. Mm -hmm. I believe that that coaching is really important in people's lives, whether it's for uh, personal growth or whether it's for professional gain, right? Mm -hmm. And over the years, I could equate a 20% increase in my business year after year based on the coaching. Wow. So I, I remember the when I first got into coaching and I wrote that first check for $1,000, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. Why would I do this? <laughs> and, and I immediately started to see some results. And those results just continued to grow and, and uh, uh, snowball on themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's been very interesting over the years. And that's why I still partake in coaching, you know, mm -hmm. because it helps you gain a more a different perspective on business as well as your personal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, coaching is so incredible. And I find that the best business leaders always have some, or CEOs always have some type of coach, business coach, professional, personal coach. And, um, you know, it is interesting that um, you'll meet people that are very, you know, successful or wealthy and whatnot. And they'll, they'll hire maybe a coach that, isn't as wealthy as them, but they're, they're coaching their own way and they have their own guidance, you know, and they're able to move them to the next level. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I've always been a big fan of coaching and consultants and things like that. I just did, did a whole YouTube marketing program and a click funnel. And I hired, you know, a consultant for that and a company to kind of help create all that and oversee it. So it, I wouldn't have been able to create the product I have 
without the right people in place. If I'm just clicking around on Google, trying to create, create my marketing system, you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so important to get the right people in place, the right coaches, the right guidance and consultants. Um, and you can see a fine line between businesses that have that in place and other businesses where, you know, they try and do everything from A to Z themselves to save a buck and, and it shows. Um, you know, and, and I just want to jump in for a minute. I, two beliefs that I have that are really core, core beliefs of mine. One is success leaves clues. If mm-hmm. you want to be successful, go do what somebody successful has done. Mm. So, you know, in essence, I say I went and built a syndication company, right? Because I followed that this model of inland real estate, mm-hmm. very successful, and it helped be successful. But the other piece is, and, and this is a core piece, is a team. And you mentioned have a strong team. Mm-hmm. And I think I've told you, Aaron, about the event coming up in October, a three-day virtual event where we're going to have 20 brand speakers from across the country that are going to speak on real estate investing and syndication and mm-hmm. uh, everything in between. What we have done is we have assembled a team for the marketing efforts around this that is incredible. And, right. and I am so uh, thankful for the, for the knowledge of being able to do things like that because it just helps your company grow. So whether you are in the real estate space, in the training space, wherever you are, and you're going to build your business, you can't do it by yourself. You know, I, too many people say all the time, hey, he's a self-made millionaire or she's mm-hmm. a self-made millionaire. In essence, I don't believe anybody succeeds alone. Right, you know, right. It's, yeah. about, it's about the efforts of, of more people on that team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's any, any business or entity that's successful is a combination of multiple people doing what they do best. You know, here at my company, it's my property manager who I couldn't do what she does all day. There's just no way I have that patience. Uh, my, my other business partner who runs the operations, the nitty gritty, he finds things in the numbers that I just don't see. It's like a puzzle. And, you know, like one of those um, optical illusion things, you know, that the sailboat center, I, you know, you look at that and sometimes numbers or business or systems in a business are the same way. One partner might look at it and not see anything but just colors and blotches. Another partner looks at it and sees the sailboat in the optical illusion like you're supposed to, right. it, uh, you know, or maybe the, the one partner sees, you know, a swing set and the other one sees, you know, see, it depends what you're looking for, but you know, you to have those right partners that complement your strengths and weaknesses. And uh, that's, you know, that's what I think we found here with my company. And that's really the magic bullet because I've also had partners that were not good mm. and were not trustworthy. And that can, that can bring down a company too. So, you know, it's so important to team up with the right people um, and, you know, put people in place that are good at what they do. Um, and a good leader does that, you know, especially cause a lot of times people be like, no, 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 I'm a, marketing expert and then you really get to see what their skills are you're like you're actually not you're you're an expert (laughs) at this you know you just thought you were or you have a degree in it but you're actually this is your skill set you know and this is where you do your best work so a great leader can recognize that too and then motivate people to work in that position or or work with their company um but uh so let's get break into real estate here a little more so you uh started with a brokerage team then you got into single family houses and then you got into small Maltese. Um, now, talk a little bit about why you transitioned from single family houses to multifamily housing. Yeah, great question. Because of economies of scale. You know, here's how I looked at it, right? If I had one single family house and nobody lived there and my mortgage payment was $1,000 a month, I was paying that out of my pocket until I got a tenant to live in there again. Mm-hmm. But if I have a small multifamily, two flat, four flat, uh, and somebody doesn't live in one of the units, I still have the op, I still have some cash flow coming in. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's a little. The economies of scale are better. So rather than having, you know, a hundred furnaces and a hundred roofs and mm-hmm. chasing around to a hundred separate locations, I could have a hundred units in one complex and have five roofs and five furnaces, and all my tenants condensed. So. From a time standpoint, from an economic standpoint, the economies of scale are much greater in the multifamily space. Mm-hmm. And there's, a, there's a, a transition there. You know, I did a lot for years in the residential side. I did a lot of fix and flips, uh, properties that we bought out of foreclosure or short sailed, and we fixed them up, resold them. 
did a lot of that over the years. And, and I just got tired of it because I thought that there was a different path that, that could could create more cash flow and long-term wealth. And that's my mantra. And that's what I teach the people I coach, right? Is how do we create more short-term cash flow and long-term wealth Mm -hmm. that benefits you, leaves a legacy for your family, generational wealth, those types of things. And and you create that through some passive income sources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And that's what we found as well. We've uh, tried to cash flow on multifamily and single family housing, condos, you know, and uh, the more units you have under one roof, the better it tends to be. The easier, mm-hmm. the more forgiving the building is. You know, you lose one tenant and even a three family too, it can be difficult where, and then, so then you realized, I think you transitioned up to bigger properties, right? So you bought a bunch of two to four units, right? And then uh, at what point did you have like an aha moment and be like, wait a minute, why don't I just buy 50 under one roof? Uh, what was that experience? Yeah, so great question. So, you know, there's that there's that line between residential and commercial. Mm-hmm. So we're buying, you know, all residential, residential loans, and we all of a sudden, we come across an 11 unit. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, you know, I'm going to syndicate this deal. So I went out and I raised some money and bought this 11 unit. And I'll tell you what, that was a learning experience all by itself, just that first deal. But I went from 11 to 64 to 87 to 187 to 250, 325, mm. and uh, you know, all the way up, uh, ultimately bought a, a 450 unit deal. And, and that just happens because, you know, I always tell people, I say, you know, to buy 400 units is not any more difficult than it is to buy 10 units. It's mm. the same amount of work, you're gonna do the same things, and it's gonna create a lot more wealth. <laughs> yeah, a lot more wealth. Correct. Correct. Yeah, a lot more cash, a lot more wealth. And yeah. uh, also, you know, with, uh, well, I guess the main difference is you need about uh, $20 million more <laughs> to yeah. make where you're buying it. So, you know, it's those connections, right? So the, it, the obvious question anyone would ask, well, listen, raising, you know, half a million bucks to buy an 11 unit is one thing, but raising, you know, $10 million to buy a 400 unit how did you ha- find that capital uh, and that growth in, the, in raising capital there? So uh, I, my system was very simple and it's, mm-hmm. it's similar to what I do today is I teach people, I taught people how to invest in real estate. So being a, a, a residential real estate agent, I had built a database. Mm-hmm. So I would start bringing people to my office twice a week on a Tuesday and Thursday night. And I did this for two years and brought uh, new faces to my office, and I went through a 45-minute presentation. Mm-hmm. So one of the best books I've ever read is called The Millionaire Real Estate Investor, written, mm-hmm. by, written by Gary Keller. Right. And we, I taught that book for years, and I taught people the strategies and systems out of that book, how to grow your real estate portfolio, how to grow your real estate business. And I would bring people in and then we would do some things like bus tours. So if you came to the office twice a month, I'd do a bus tour on Saturday morning where I'd get a small bus. We'd put 10 or 12 people on the bus, have some donuts and some bagels and orange juice. And we would go out and we'd look at six or eight uh, properties. We'd look at a couple of foreclosures We'd look at a couple of new construction. We'd look at a couple of just handyman special, just something you could go in and put, you know, um, some new lipstick on and and mm-hmm. turn it around and it would be fine again to resell. Sure. I always save the worst for last. <laughs> like I remember one Saturday morning, we get off the bus and we had looked at about six properties and we get to the two foreclosures. And we walk in the front door, and as we walk in the front door of this one property, there's a hole in the floor. That it's a ranch house on a crawl space, and the hole goes from the that main floor down into the crawl space. And there was a plank that you had to walk across to get to the other side. Sure. And one of the a uh, couple of the investors or potential investors that were there said this is way too much work. I'm going to give you some money. You do this. Mm-hmm. And that's how, that's how I started raising money was mm-hmm. people said, Hey, you know, we're going to give you money. You do it. So it wasn't even a conscious decision at that point, but then all of a sudden it became a conscious decision and just started syndicating, syndicating properties. 
That's great. Yeah, I mean, the bus tours are a great way to connect with people and show them the tangible real estate there. You know, the uh, evening meetings were actually, that's how we, uh, we started raising capital as well. We started a group on meetup.com called New Jersey Real Estate Network. We have about mm. 3,700 members in it now. Um, so we used to do meetings in our office three or four times a month, pretty much every week. And, um, you know, that, that was, and during that time, honestly, looking back, it was kind of easy, you know, we'd yeah. throw our events, we'd do our, uh, presentation, we'd have other speakers come sometime as well. But for the most part, you know, when you can meet someone in person, when you can gather together 12, 15, 20 people in a room and, and, and get their full attention and they can see all the other people interested in investing also in that, in that opportunity, um, that is the best way to explain your service, um, build a relationship with um, new investors, and uh, also raise capital, successfully raise capital so you can close deals. Um, but now with everything going on, it's, it, the game has changed. You know, it's all online. It's all um, webinars. And uh, we've transitioned our events to online forms, you know, webinars, but they're you know, not, not quite the same as, as meeting in, in person. And, uh, yeah. you know, thank goodness for social media because you can get out there with that. But uh, it, it's definitely a different space now. You know, usually we'll meet people through the webinars initially. And uh, then if they're serious and they're qualified, we'll meet in the office or, uh, just have an, you know, another one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting, something like that. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's changed. Have you also transitioned while well, you're having this event coming up and obviously it's all done online. So talk a little bit about how the, what it's like to throw an event right now in the middle of this pandemic, you know? Yeah. So, so it's crazy, right? And I always thought that throwing a live event was hard with, you know, ads and marketing and getting the camera guy there and those types of things. Mm -hmm. But this, the, the spinning plates for this is just crazy. I, um, I knew when we went into it that we would really have a learning curve and to put a three day event on, I've put events on in the past, never a three day event. Mm -hmm. And, and I love live events. I like going to live events. They can be exciting. They can be um, eventful. They can be knowledgeable mm -hmm. and plus the networking aspect and you get to meet people. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to design an event that we would have all that happen at. Cool. So that all that same type of, th of, of, of atmosphere and everything that went on at a live event we were going to have virtually. So there's been a learning curve with it, but I think that we have it together. You know, we're going to have some Facebook live. Uh, somebody can, can join for $9 on Facebook live, get three days of, you know, speakers and knowledge and information that will better their career, better them per personally and professionally, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then there's the VIP upgrade. And you can upgrade to VIP and play cash flow online. Mm. Oh, cool. We're gonna have yeah, we're gonna have some networking online. There'll be some panels that'll be only allowed for the VIPs. Plus, you're gonna get all every session, the recording from every session. Mm. So you're gonna get a lot as a VIP and the interactiveness. You're gonna be able to meet people, you'll meet panelists, you're gonna be able to ask questions and and be more interactive and have participation based on how we've we've put this whole platform together so we're real excited about it and believe that you know we'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand people that'll sign up and and be part of the event so it I think that anybody that comes will will see the excitement and the big thing is are going to learn a lot from it Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the you know, name of the game is giving true value to people that are uh, coming to your events because you know there are a lot of opportunities for people to learn about real estate. There's this and that. The, the, you know, there's there's all so many gurus and talking heads in the real estate space. You know, um, and I I love the guys that, like did one deal and now they're selling coaching packages. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've had guys like yeah. offer to coach me in real estate and they've done like a fraction of the deals I've done. I'm like, why why would you coach me in real estate? I'm just not sure. You know, sure. so um, yeah, it's it's an interesting space. You know, um, everyone's <laughs> writing a book. Everyone's an expert. You know, I love that. <laughs> you're, you're, that's classic, actually, you know, but you're right. Yeah, so. yeah. I had one guy who's like teaching like how to raise half a million bucks or something and like, you know, comes to me I'm like, buddy, I've raised like 10 times the capital you've raised. I'm not sure why I would pay you for your coaching program. But, yeah. you know, so definitely uh, interesting uh, space with that. But I'm glad you're putting something out there from someone who's actually experienced in real estate with a good coaching program there. And, uh so some of the some of the speakers um, 
at your event, just to give us like an idea of, of who might be speaking there, some people we might know, or, or uh, what are some topics also? Sure, sure. Uh, so um, Brian Burke from mm-hmm. Praxis Capital will be speaking. Uh, sure. Michael Blank. Uh, I think a lot of people will know him. Some real uh, good national, well-known speakers and trainers uh, will be speaking. And, you know, I, I'm not of the opinion that, you know, oh, there's only enough room in that space for me, right? Mm-hmm. I believe there's a lot of room in the space because, Aaron, people are going to like me and not like you, and people are going to like you and not like me, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that there's, you know, people who talk about competition, I don't believe in competition. Our only competition is ourselves. It's between our own ears and our mind, right? Because if True. we think we can, we can. If we think we can't, we can't, you know? Exactly. Uh, so I, I think that we can, we all bring something to the table that somebody can benefit from. Mm-hmm. And by bringing a platform together that, you know, 20, 22 people are, are part of that are not only in the real estate space part of it, but they're in the ancillary business also, lenders and insurance and, uh, you know, things that we all need to know about that sometimes you don't think about as a new investor. Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. like the first syndication you did, right? Did you think about everything that needed to go go into it or happen (laughs) in that first syndication? I thought I did, right? (laughs) Yeah, right, right. But we learn over time, you know, it's like, Um, when I look back now and I think, God, you know, I was going to wait till next year to put this event on. And somebody said, why wait? Let's do it in October. And I said, mm-hmm. okay. And never thinking through, and I think that's the biggest challenge a lot of people go through is they don't mm-hmm. think things through, mm-hmm. but never thinking through all the stuff that had to happen. But who mm-hmm. cares, right? So now mm-hmm. we're down the road. We're into it. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think it's a great time to do this because quite frankly, people <clears throat> are looking at the stock market and you know, it's almost a ticking time bomb a lot of people think. And it's just if you're really trying to retire with a predictable retirement account, you're trying to build wealth and financial freedom, you, you shouldn't be 100% invested in the stock market. You need to diversify. And I think a lot of the age old wisdom of financial advisors, oh, just ride the index fund, just stuff it away and when you're 65, you look at it then um, that's not necessarily the best financial advice anymore. And people are trying to diversify into real estate. People need to learn about this class. They need to understand it before they invest in it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to become a full-time real estate investor or become a realtor. You, know, you keep doing what you do best where you make good income. But real estate should be, in my opinion, a third to 50% of your investment portfolio and it's a great way to diversify. Um, you could use your IRA, you know, and, and but people need to learn about it. And there's so many talking heads. Um, so events like this are where people need to go to learn more about that, whether you're in or out of the industry. So how can people sign up for your upcoming event? Sure. Great. for Thanks for asking. So you can go to our website, which is multifamilyglobalsummit.com. No spaces, all one word, multifamilyglobalsummit.com. And you can register uh, for either the Facebook Live session, just the regular registration or the VIP registration. So you have a choice. But, you know, we wanted to do something that was going to be inexpensive enough, too, where people could get a ton of knowledge. So mm-hmm. exactly. Exactly. No, it's great. Sounds like you said nine dollars for the initial access to everything. Right. Right. And there's an early bird special right now, too. You get 20% off. So it's like $7.20 before the 30th of uh, September. So, you know, it's incredible. I've seen people pay more for a cup of coffee at Starbucks than uh, you're charging for an entire three day summit on an asset class that's made, what is it, 70% of the millionaires in the world like started with real estate, right? Is that that the the line? So, you know, it's such an incredible class, so many unknowns, but uh, here for $7, you can join this uh, incredible event. So I'm going to check that out. And uh, that's great, Mike. So, uh, all right, very interesting podcast here. Any parting words for our listeners? No, you know, I think that you need to risk and take a chance and step out and do something different. You know, we all spend too much time in our box, in our space, and, and we're afraid to venture out and do something new. And that's how we learn and that's how we grow, whether it's personally or professionally. So, and if you're having trouble making that transition into, uh, you know, outside of your box, uh, you know, call, find a coach. I'll sign up for that. I'm sure you would too. But go to my website. We can, you know, we can schedule a one-hour free coaching session if you are stuck or need to 
are, are looking to, to progress or do something different. And even if you decide that coaching's not right for you, at least you walk away with a couple of golden nuggets that'll help you moving forward. Yeah. And what's your website for the coaching? It's mycoreintentions.com. And you, or you could reach me at Mike at mycoreintentions.com. So. Right. Right. Thanks a lot, Mike. Yeah, we'll check that out. We'll put that in the show notes. Okay. Uh, just send me those uh, links. We'll put those in the show notes for your event and for your coaching website there. So our listeners, Great. if you're on YouTube, you can uh, find that in the description or in the podcast description as well to sign up for Mike or take a look at his coaching program there as well. That's an interesting uh, free consultation. I might take you up on that myself, actually. So um, all right. Thanks a lot, Mike, for your time here. Thank you, our listeners. And my name is Aaron Fragnito, co-owner of People's Capital Group. To learn more about how we buy apartment buildings and other types of real estate with passive investors and how we've been doing this for about 10 years here out in New Jersey. Uh, go to peoplescapitalgroup.com where you can fill out an application and see if you qualify as a passive investor and learn more about what we have going on. You can check out our podcast episodes there. You can watch our YouTube videos on People's Capital Group on YouTube and learn more at peoplescapitalgroup.com. But that's it for today. I'm your host, Aaron Fragnito. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. You have a good one, my friend. Thank you, Aaron. 